For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Ante marked the beginning of the end. It sent the message that we can prosecute these people. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Meet the real woman behind the tabloid headlines in a personal podcast that delves into the life of the notorious Tori Spelling as she takes us through the ups and downs of her sometimes glamorous, sometimes chaotic life and marriage. I just filed for divorce. Whoa. I said the words <laughs> that I've said like in my head for like 16 years. Wild. Listen to Miss Spelling on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Michael Rappaport, and I have been professionally podcasting for 10 years. The podcast game has changed so much, and if you're looking for the most disruptive podcast in the world, then subscribe to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast today. We're talking sports, politics, pop culture, entertainment, and anything that catches my attention. Listen to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Sino Show. I'm your host, Sino McFarlane. I'm an addiction specialist. I'm a coach, I'm a translator, and I'm God's middleman. My job is to crack hearts and let the light in and help everyone shift the narrative. I want to help you wake up and I want to help you get free. Most importantly, I don't want you to feel alone. Listen to the Sino Show every Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala. You might recognize us from our first show, Locatora Radio. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh. If you feel it, put your hands in the air. Show some love to the new while you're there. Let's take it one day at a time. Cause you and die out I am so excited as this is the very first official crossover series of What's God Got to Do With It and the Outway podcast. Because if you've been listening to me on Outway, you know that that podcast is all about helping women break themselves out of the food and body prison, end the dieting madness, and take control of their health for good. But without all that restriction, obsession, and shame, and without dragging it out for years to address it. And if you've been listening to me on What's God Got to Do With It, you know that we are all about the fusion of where science meets faith and where faith meets transformation and miracles. So this is a beautiful opportunity to talk about the crossover of where science meets food and body image and self-image struggles and where that intersects faith or what's God got to do with all of that. And that's exactly what this six-part series is all about. So part one is really just an introduction where we're simply going to set up this massive topic. Part two is all about the big picture of where faith meets science meets food and body image struggles. In part three, we go deep into the self-image and identity that you would need to actually step into the version of you that would have that health, that would have that relationship with food and her body, and who would actually be at peace and feel free. And of course, how that fuses with this faith brain conversation. In part four, we dive deeper into what God has to do with what I call your food brain and disordered eating patterns and filling voids in your head, heart, and spirit with food or Netflix or wine or whatever your drug of choice is. And it's a hole that will never be filled by those things. 
In part five, we dive into the complicated relationship that women have with their bodies and their body image and physical pain, which is not talked about enough, in my opinion, and how to heal all of that from a faith meets science perspective and invite God into the conversation. And then wrapping it up in part six, we get into the strategy side of things, as in what does it look like to use what you've learned about neuroscience and faith and healing your relationship with food and your body image to go create a winning game plan that sets you up to win and one that your brain just learns so you can go live your life. Food can be food and you can feel comfortable in your skin and free from the chains of restricting or punishing your body. So let's dive on in. Here's part six. Welcome back to the Outway and What's God Got to Do With It crossover series. And we are back for the final episode of this series. And so if you missed parts one, two, three, four, and five, definitely check those out because up until now, we've covered a lot. And today is going to really bring it all together. And so We talked about the big picture of this entire faith meets science meets food and body image conversation. And we took a deep dive into the self-image and identity that you need to actually step into the version of you that would have that health and that would have that relationship with food and her body and who would actually be at peace and feel free. And then we talked about what God has to do with what I call your food brain and disordered eating patterns and filling voids in your head and heart and spirit with food or Netflix or wine or whatever your drug of choice is. And it's a hole that will never be filled by those things. And then last week, we talked all about what I call your body brain, which includes your physical body. And then we talked about this from a nervous system perspective and a physiological health perspective. But as you now understand from last week's episode, We can't talk about the physical body side of things without also talking about the body image and your view of your body and your relationship with your body. And then also physical pain, because that's definitely part of the equation. And so we have to talk about all of it. And they're all a thousand percent intertwined. And then today, we're going to talk all about the strategy side of things and how to carve out your own winning game plan And of course, we have to talk about how to earn back your own trust in the meantime, because again, let's just say you had all of that strategy and habit and brain change stuff. Let's just say you had, you know, the perfect plan and the perfect steps to take. Who's to say you would actually show up for yourself and use it and stick with it? And then, of course, we're going to learn about our fifth and final weight of the weight, because again, you know, the weight on your body isn't the real weight. The real weight is all this other stuff, a.k.a. those chains of beliefs and behaviors and shame that you've been carrying around with you. And there is no shame in this whatsoever. It's, you know, it's what I learned. It's what all my clients learned, too. But until you break the chains, you are going to keep walking around with them. And they do. They just keep getting heavier and heavier. And if you're anything like I was, you kind of become desensitized to them and they start to feel normal because they're disguised as you being air quotes health conscious or getting fit or taking care of yourself. But they are not normal. And they are chains that bog down your head and your heart and your spirit and in turn your body. And they're chains that do not have to be there. And that's why as I talk about this idea of playing a winning game, I actually want to briefly revisit the first weight of the weight from a few episodes back because it's so relevant to today's conversation. And it's this, we have to ditch the fight. And that's the weight of chronic and restrictive dieting and the weight of all that restriction and deprivation and punishment and persuasion and stress that typically comes alongside food and your body. And it does not have to. But also, I'll remind you of this. God did not design us to have such a toxic relationship with food and our bodies. But that is so much easier said than done, right? So what's the solution and what's the alternative to that? Well, most women think that, you know, the alternative to that is feeling out of control of food if they aren't dieting or going off the rails and kind of, you know, overstuffing themselves if they're not following something. But I believe the true alternative to the toxic dieting and restrictive mentality 
is everything we've talked about these past few weeks. And that's really to go make peace with food and make peace with your body. And it's really to wave that white flag and lay down the weapons of destruction and and end this war that you've been in with yourself and with food and with your body. And this is where I'm inviting you to just go get so sick and tired of the fight and to just simply declare that you're ready to make peace with food and get on the same team as your body. Even if you don't necessarily know what that looks like, I'm just inviting you to be open to ending the cycle of the fight after fight after fight and really that false sense of control and vow to go in the direction of peace and love and freedom. And what better way to do that than with God on your side? And so you might be thinking, but Leanne, I tried inviting God into this. And nine times out of 10, when I ask a woman what that actually means, it typically means that they asked God to give them more willpower and discipline and self-control so they can keep dieting and restricting and obsessing. But that's the opposite of what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to invite God into the conversation of you actually healing your relationship with food in your body. And that is something that not only have most women never done, but they've never invited God into it. So let's talk about how you can finally play what I call a winning game and a game that really sets you up to win rather than constantly playing a game that's either setting you up to lose or setting you up to fail. So I can't even tell you how many women come to me and they say things like, Leanne, I just need more motivation and accountability and willpower. Or Leanne, I know what to do, but I can't get myself to do it. Or Leanne, I can't do this anymore. Like I hate all this dieting. I hate all this fill in the blank. Or they say like, I'm not even sure it's ever going to happen. But I believe that beliefs like this are actually a sign that you're playing a losing game And a game that wasn't designed for you and designed for you to win. And so what inevitably happens is you end up committing to this new plan or program, but it wasn't designed for you or you flat out don't enjoy it or you hate it, right? And to boot, it is not easy. Like it feels really hard. And again, part of the reason it's hard is because you might actually hate the game plan, right? So of course, you can't follow it long term. And of course, you quit. And I wouldn't blame you, right? Like who would want to play that game? That's no fun and it's definitely not a lifelong game. And it's really hard and exhausting. And here's the thing. I played that game too for decades. I was desperately trying to make over my lifestyle and my health. And I simply didn't know what I didn't know. And so whether it was the life I led when I was overweight, like unhealthy and obsessed with food and kind of eating as much of it as I could and really like using it as a as a numbing and coping mechanism, Or the life I led when I was doing the opposite, like the orthorexia, the restricting, the micromanaging, the obsessing and and taking health to such an unhealthy level. Or the life I led where my body was injured and constantly in pain and, and what I thought at the time was broken. Or the life I led when I was constantly just feeling out of control of my habits, my willpower, my mojo, depression, anxiety, all of the mental, emotional stuff. And so any of the lifestyles that I led throughout my life, if I was having these conversations instead of the mainstream conventional eat less, move more conversations that I know are a dime a dozen and everyone's trying to invite you into them, this would have saved me years of frustration and a gajillion dollars, which is definitely a real number. (laughs) And I could have actually enjoyed the experience of my life and my body along the way. And you know this now, but before I went on my own healing journey, I struggled with my weight and with food and my body my entire life. And my whole life, I was focusing on the scale and focusing on my excess tummy that I swore would make me happy if I lost it. And my mind was fixated on everything weight-related for as long as I can remember. And then for almost 20 years, I went and actively researched fitness and weight loss and nutrition. And along the way, I tried every idiotic diet out there, and I jumped on any crazy workout bandwagon or regimen I could find. And I, too, I blew my money on expensive shakes and frozen meals and pills and potions and programs and trainers. Like, heck, I even considered bariatric surgery at one point. And this is before bariatric surgery was as common as it is today. But even the methods that did work for me, they wouldn't work very long. And I would somehow learn how to, you know, game the system so that I could still eat what I wanted. And I always ended up right back where I started. And oftentimes with interest, I would gain more than I lost. And it really became this predictable pattern every single time until I experienced what I call the switch. 
And I believe that there is this switch that has to take place in your head and your heart too. And it doesn't have to be one of those pain-induced rock bottom switches, although I really do believe we're moved into action by pain far more than we are moving towards pleasure. But that switch has to happen regardless, as in that moment when you know that your life has to change and there needs to be some massive shifts that occur and your state needs to shift and your environment needs to shift. And there's got to be that shift on your insides where, again, you're just ready to ditch the fight. You're ready to wave the white flag and you're ready to surrender to making peace with your body and peace with food and finding peace in your heart. And that really does have to be the first step. And then you can talk about strategy. Okay, so I wanted to just make that clear, right? That's got to be the first step. And then after you've made the switch, I teach my clients what I believe is one of the most important and most, you know, the, the really the biggest distinctions that they're going to learn. And it's shifting their mindset from what I call the repair mentality to the care mentality. Okay, so from repair to care to self-care. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Lanti marked the beginning of the end, sparking a chain of events that would ultimately dismantle the most powerful crime organization in American history. It sent the message to them that we can prosecute these people. Discover how a group of young prosecutors took on the mafia and with the help of law enforcement brought down its most powerful figures. These bosses on the commission had no idea what was coming their way from the federal government. From Wolf Entertainment and iHeart Podcasts, this is Law & Order Criminal Justice System. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Sino Show. I'm your host, Sino McFarlane. I'm an addiction specialist. I'm a coach, I'm a translator, and I'm God's middleman. My job is to crack hearts and let the light in and help everyone shift the narrative. Whether you get down to sex, drugs, alcohol, love addiction, self hate, codependency, or anything else for that matter, I want to help you wake up and I want to help you get free. I want to help you unleash your potential, overcome obstacles, and achieve your goals. Most importantly, I don't want you to feel alone. So join me on The Sino Show, where each week we'll feature a compelling individual with an even more noteworthy story that will be sure to inspire and educate. Listen to The Sino Show every Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello everyone, I am Lacey Lamar. And I'm Amber Ruffin, a better Lacey Lamar. Boo. Okay, everybody, we have exciting news to share. We're back with season two of the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network. You thought you had fun last season? Well, you were right. And you should tune in today for new fun segments like Sister Court and listening to Lacey's steamy DMs. We've got new and exciting guests like Michael Beach, that's my husband, Daphne Spring. Daniel Thrasher, Peppermint, Morgan J, and more. You gotta watch us. No, you mean you have to listen to us. I mean, you can still watch us, but you gotta listen. Like, if you're watching us, you have to tell us. Like, if you're out the window, you have to say, hey, I'm watching you outside of the window. Just, just you know what? Listen to the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Renee Stubbs, and I'm obsessed with sports, especially tennis. On the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast, I get the chance to do what I love, talk about how tennis and other women's sports are growing and changing, and what the future holds. I think I just genuinely loved what I did. I loved this waking up, putting on my sports gear. I still believe it was so rewarding. Maybe you can relate to it as well. As a woman, I think it's a very powerful feeling to to have a job at which you're able to see improvements in real time. On the show, we dissect everything going on in the game straight from the biggest players in the world. Plus, 
serve up recaps of all the matches and headlines in the game, including a rundown of the US Open every Monday. Listen to the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast every Monday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by Capital One, founding partner of iHeart Women's Sports. MTV's official Challenge podcast is back for another season. That's right. The Challenge is about to embark on its monumental 40th season, y'all, and we are coming along for the ride. Woohoo! That would be me, Devin Simone. And then there's me, Davon Rogers. And we're here to take you behind the scenes of, drumroll please, uh, no, 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 no. the Challenge 40, Battle of the Eras. Yes. Each week, cast members will be joining us to spill all of the tea on the relentless challenges, heartbreaking eliminations, and of course, all the juicy drama. And let's not forget about the hookups. Anyway, regardless of what era you're rooting for at home, everyone is welcome here on MTV's official Challenge podcast. So join us every week as we break down episodes of the Challenge 40 Battle of the Eras. Listen to MTV's official Challenge podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So the repair mentality is when you're always living in the short term, and chasing after fast results without weighing the cost of the damage that it does in the future. So you're sacrificing your health or your happiness for results. And it's basically like putting Band-Aids on top of the bigger problem, and then the bigger problem just gets worse. And so switching from the repair mentality to the care mentality, where you and your body are a team and partners in crime for the rest of your life. And so it's a matter of like, okay, I need to learn how to take care of my mind, my brain, my body, because I only have one. And and here's the thing, like you want short-term results, but not at the expense of your health or your well-being or your happiness, right? And that's where most women never learned how to eat to take care of themselves. They learned how to count food or how to measure or how to portion control. They never learned how to let food just be food and eat with freedom and choice. And, And yes, pleasure too, because you know how I say, if love and warm chocolate chip cookies is wrong, I don't want you to be right. But most women never learn that, right? It was always this kind of disciplinarian kind of relationship with food. And most women never learned how to take care of their bodies. Like they learned how to force themselves to exercise or how to muddle through something till the minute hand reached a certain number on the clock and they were done. Or, you know, how to hate their bodies in the mirror or how to regiment themselves or punish themselves or talk themselves into doing things that they absolutely hated because they thought they should. Or maybe if you're like me, like you learned how to hide your body or hide your true desires for having joy and fun and connection. Like I know for me, I just pretended like I didn't even care anymore. I was like, oh, it's fine. Like this is just how it is. But deep down, I really did care. And so most women never learn how to go meet their body again and to go experiment and be a kid again and feel like a woman and play and experiment and just like move their bodies in a way that gets them to meet their body again. And Let their body be whatever it is and meet your body there, but without all of that shame and self-rejection and criticism. And most women never learn how to live with freedom and peace of mind. Like they learn how to put their life on hold for their goals or how to wait until they're skinnier or fitter or richer or until they get air quotes there to do what they want to do and eat what they want to eat and be who they want to be and feel how they want to feel. And they never learned how to live in the right now without shame of their past or fear of what will happen in the future. I mean, like really living in the moment. But also most women I talk to never learned how to accept that it won't happen overnight, that it is a journey, it is a process, and it definitely, definitely won't look or play out as they originally imagined. Like it's definitely not linear. But here's what I can assure you. If you essentially start over And grow it from the ground up. And when I say it, it's like in your brain, it's in your head, it's in your heart. Grow it from the ground up. And if if you start at the roots, like we talked about in the first couple of episodes of this series, and nurture your brain and feed your brain and metaphorically water your brain, it will grow and it will flourish. And you'll end up with this beautiful, boundless, can always count on it kind of homegrown love. But a lot of women, they don't do that. They get caught up just focusing on the physical side of things. And they leave out the brain and the nervous system and neglect the mental, emotional, spiritual side of it completely. And so not only does this leave your self-image really susceptible and vulnerable, but it also leaves a huge opportunity on the table. Because if you understand your three-dimensional brain 
it then becomes super simple to influence it. But again, you've got to make that switch, okay? And as you're now learning, health is this three-dimensional conversation. It's physical, it's mental, it's social, it's emotional, it's spiritual, right? And leaving any one of those off the table when we talk about your health and your well-being and your happiness and really your winning game plan That's a recipe for disaster. And that's why your winning game plan has to account for all of you. And so now when we're doing that and when we're in that kind of framework, the conversation then becomes, okay, so what do I need physically to get and stay healthy? And what do I need mentally, emotionally to get and stay healthy? And what do I need socially and spiritually to get and stay healthy? And of course, we've got to redefine health. But that's why the biggest mindset shift of all that I want you to make is really from this repair mentality to the care mentality, where, again, that repair mentality is, you know, your body is something that's broken and it needs to be fixed or repaired. It's like a burden or a stress or a worry to the care mentality where you and your body are a team and partners in crime for the rest of your life. So it's like, okay, I might as well learn how to take care of my body because I only have one. It's a big distinction. The repair mentality is saying like, okay, I have a body and a brain and a heart that always feels weighed down and bogged down and stressed and it's always in that survival mode versus care mentality is a brain and a body and a heart that feels light and peaceful and stress-free and makes you feel better and better each day like you can actually thrive. It's the difference between always fighting to move away from pain and your body and always being in fight or flight versus moving towards safety and peace of mind. It's the difference between always feeling like you're trying to repair damages versus create the prevention and the cure. And it's the difference between always reacting and feeling like you're being caused by your body to responding and being the cause of your body. That repair mentality, it's always looking to someone else versus the care mentality is learning how yourself and asking God to meet you there. The repair mentality is that short-term, you know, immediate gratification trap versus that long-term just do it once and have it forever self-care mentality. The repair mentality is when you're mindful and it's at your pace and it doesn't feel out of control. It feels calm. But also it's the difference between like always needing someone else or like dependent or codependent on someone else. Like you need those drip feeds of motivation from somebody else. Versus like, no, you're the pilot and you're the driver and you've been taught how to fish and you have your biggest superpower, which is God on your side. And it's the difference between this journey, like getting your health back, being a punishment or a burden or a toll or a nuisance or a worry versus like, no, it's a gift, but it's also your responsibility and yours alone because no one will do it for you. You know, and that repair mentality is like, okay, I'm going to focus on it when it's bothering me or when it's upset or hurt or I don't like it versus like, no, I have a body and a brain 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on a leap year, (laughs) right? But this is the difference, right? And, And I get it. This is not what you learned, right? The world is trying to seduce you into staying stuck in the repair mentality, always living in the short term fast results without weighing the costs of the damage that it does in the future and sacrificing your health or your happiness for quick results that you inevitably have to give back instead of the care mentality where, again, you and your body are a team and your partners in crime for the rest of your life. And you learn to take care of your mind and brain and body because you only have one. And here's the thing, like, yes, you want short-term results, but I promise you, not at the expense of your health or well-being or your happiness. And This feels like the perfect time to bring in this scripture because I feel like it's one of the most common ones that I hear from my clients that it feels a bit like a disconnect because they logically understand it. But when you've lived in the weight loss mentality and the repair mentality for so long, a lot of times it can feel disconnecting, like where maybe you know it logically, but you don't know it, know it, and it hasn't seeped into your bones or you don't know how to live it. And it's from 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, and it says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This one from 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, 
God will destroy him for God's temple is holy and you are that temple. And so again, this is probably one of the most famous scriptures, especially the first one. But it's like, Leanne, I know my body's a holy temple, but I'm not living it. And that's why, like, when you are living in that constant repair mode and trading in and really sacrificing your health and happiness for fast results without weighing the damage that it does in the future, this is destroying God's temple. And this is not glorifying your body. It's it's really, you know, chasing skinny or it's chasing the scale or it's chasing the idol of weight loss. And by extension, it keeps you from teaching your brain what it needs to learn how to take care of it and honor it. And I know that you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, but are you treating it as such? I'll remind you what God's word says in Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And so this is where I'm inviting you to not go down the path of the conventional wisdom or worldly ways, like renew your mind, discern what is the will of God. And I truly believe God wants you to be of sound mind and health in body, mind, and spirit. And that is the difference between you continuing down the road of the repair mentality versus renewing your mind and taking on the self-care or care mentality. And the truth is, is if all you take away from this episode is that distinction, that distinction between repair and care could very well change your life. But of course, we won't end there because you definitely, definitely have to earn back your own trust because think about it too. Have you ever gone to start a new plan or program, you know, most likely on a Monday because Mondays are like the, okay, I'm going to start over on Monday days. And, you know, on the surface, you are gung-ho. You are ready to take it by the reins. You're so committed. You're hoping, let's be honest, you're secretly praying that this time really is different and that this will be, you know, the thing that changes everything for you. But secretly in the back of your mind, you're waiting for it to fail. Maybe you're even outright expecting it to fail because you know in your heart of hearts that even though the plan or the program itself might be different, you know that deep down you haven't changed and that you haven't gotten your mind and your head and your brain and your heart aligned in a way that would cause things to be different. And so one of the biggest struggles that my stressless eating clients have when they come to me is the inner chatter and the internal self-talk of what my clients would call self-sabotage, but I call them the never gonna inner voices, as in, you're never gonna do this, you're never gonna have that. And it's those voices that sabotage you before you even begin. Like they're, you're never gonna get there. Like what makes you think this time will be different? Or, you know, you're never gonna stick with this long-term. Like you know how your story ends. Or you're never actually gonna get past this. Like just face it, you're gonna be dealing with this the rest of your life. Or those, those voices when you start something new, like you're not going to see this through. You're never going to see it through. This is just going to be one more thing that you start and don't finish. So why bother? And the most common one I hear, honestly, is what if I'm the one person this doesn't work for because I'm too broken, I'm too messed up, I'm too far gone, I'm too whatever, and I'm never going to find anything that works. And so that's what I call the never gonna in our voices. And this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest things that needs to be addressed in our self-image or else it will become this self-fulfilling prophecy. And so your, your voices might have a different name or a different face. But if you're anything like myself or the women I work with, you too have probably done your share of trying to out-diet those voices or out-motivate them, out-smart them, out-willpower them. And unfortunately, though, like that's the part that's not working and I can promise you will never work because this is the part of your struggle that, again, it's not a diet or food problem and it's not a motivation or self-sabotage problem, even if it feels like one. And it's not because you are indeed destined to never gonna your life away. It is a thinking problem and it's a brain problem and it's a self-image thing. And I put it specifically in the category of what I would consider a self-esteem problem, but not in the way that most people think about self-esteem. I know I used to think that self-esteem was a matter of self-confidence, but what I've come to discover is that in reality, self-esteem is really the no-like trust factor of yourself. Like, how much do you know yourself? How much do you like yourself? And then the big one, how much do you trust yourself? Right. 
And so when it comes to those never gonna inner voices, that's going to be the self-trust factor that's working against you. And and I see it all the time. You know, women come to me and their self-esteem is totally shot. Like time after time, they've witnessed themselves, you know, starting and stopping and starting and quitting and starting. And then they finally say, okay, screw it. Like by the time they come to me, they're at that point where they don't believe a word they say when they say things like, OK, this time it's going to be different or, you know, this time I'm for real. Because in reality, they've witnessed themselves time after time making promises to themselves that they either don't keep or can't keep or just don't even want to keep. And so not only do they not believe a word they say when they make promises to themselves that, you know, this time it's going to be different. But on top of that, they believe themselves less and less every single time they go to make a new promise or a new commitment or a new declaration. And basically what happens is their self-esteem bank account stays chronically overdrawn, right? Because they're witnessing themselves not follow through. And so again, this isn't a diet or food problem. It's not about motivation or self-sabotage. It is about self-esteem and self-trust. But that's actually a great problem to have. Because the great thing about that is that addressing your self-esteem and the self-trust factor of your self-image, it's totally treatable. It's totally changeable. And it's something that you can transform almost immediately with the right strategies and the right tools. But unfortunately, you know, most women don't do this. Like they simply commit to the next diet, the next plan, the next program, and the next, you know, shiny short-term solution or Band-Aid, and they never address the real problem. And they never address all the stuff that's bogging them down or bringing them down and weighing them down. And again, that is the weight of the weight that we have been talking about these past few weeks. But in order to change this, we've got to talk about why this keeps happening. And so I found that it usually actually falls into the following categories. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Galanti marked the beginning of the end, sparking a chain of events that would ultimately dismantle the most powerful crime organization in American history. It sent the message to them that we can prosecute these people. Discover how a group of young prosecutors took on the mafia and with the help of law enforcement brought down its most powerful figures. These bosses on the commission had no idea what was coming their way from the federal government. From Wolf Entertainment and iHeart Podcasts, this is Law & Order Criminal Justice System. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeart Radio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Sino Show. I'm your host, Sino McFarlane. I'm an addiction specialist. I'm a coach, I'm a translator, and I'm God's middleman. My job is to crack hearts and let the light in and help everyone shift the narrative. Whether you get down to sex, drugs, alcohol, love addiction, self hate, codependency, or anything else for that matter, I want to help you wake up and I want to help you get free. I want to help you unleash your potential, overcome obstacles, and achieve your goals. Most importantly, I don't want you to feel alone. So join me on The Sino Show, where each week we'll feature a compelling individual with an even more noteworthy story that will be sure to inspire and educate. Listen to The Sino Show every Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello everyone, I am Lacey Lamar. And I'm Amber Ruffin, a better Lacey Lamar. Boo. Okay, everybody, we have exciting news to share. We're back with season two of the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network. You thought you had fun last season? Well, you were right. And you should tune in today for new fun segments like Sister Court and listening to Lacey's steamy DMs. We've got new and exciting guests like Michael Beach, that's my husband, Daphne Spring. 
Daniel Thrasher, Peppermint, Morgan J, and more. You got to watch us. No, you mean you have to listen to us. I mean, you can still watch us, but you got to listen. Like, if you're watching us, you have to tell us. Like, if you're out the window, you have to say, hey, I'm watching you outside of the window. Just, just you know what? Listen to the Amber and Lacey, Lacey and Amber show on Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Renee Stubbs, and I'm obsessed with sports, especially tennis. On the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast, I get the chance to do what I love, talk about how tennis and other women's sports are growing and changing, and what the future holds. I think I just genuinely loved what I did. I loved this waking up, putting on my sports gear. I still believe it was so rewarding. Maybe you can relate to it as well. As a woman, I think it's a very powerful feeling to to have a job at which you're able to see improvements in real time. On the show, we dissect everything going on in the game straight from the biggest players in the world. Plus, serve up recaps of all the matches and headlines in the game, including a rundown of the US Open every Monday. Listen to the Renee Stubbs Tennis Podcast every Monday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Presented by Capital One, founding partner of iHeart Women's Sports. MTV's official Challenge podcast is back for another season. That's right. The Challenge is about to embark on its monumental 40th season, y'all, and we are coming along for the ride. Woohoo! That would be me, Devin Simone. And then there's me, Davon Rogers. And we're here to take you behind the scenes of, drumroll please, uh, no, 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 no. the Challenge 40, Battle of the Eras. Yes. Each week, cast members will be joining us to spill all of the tea on the relentless challenges, heartbreaking eliminations, and of course, all the juicy drama. And let's not forget about the hookups. Anyway, regardless of what era you're rooting for at home, everyone is welcome here on MTV's official Challenge podcast. So join us every week as we break down episodes of the Challenge 40 Battle of the Eras. Listen to MTV's official Challenge podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I found that it usually actually falls into the following categories. So the first category is you're getting smarter, right? Your brain is getting smarter. And after attempting one unsustainable restriction-driven plan after another, it's only logical to assume that willpower and discipline won't just magically show up for you this time around any more than it did like the last time at least, right? And that if things play out the way they usually do, it is safe to assume that this new plan won't work either. It's actually smart of you to make this assumption. And nine times out of 10, you would be right. Category two is your brain gets smarter. So yes, you're getting smarter because you know, but also your brain itself is getting smarter. And this is a brain thing and you can't outsmart your brain. And without getting too geeky, it's helpful to know that short-term habits and long-term habits, like the ones that you know, you always have them. They actually become a habit in your brain kind of habits. They live in two separate parts of your brain. And so your long-term brain is driven by ease and pleasure. And when your brain experiences the opposite of those two things, like, you know, the resistance or the force or the persuasion or the constant hunger that comes alongside diets and restriction, it essentially says, okay, don't worry, brain. We don't have to move this thing over to the long-term part of our brain because they're not going to be doing that very long. And, you know, nine times out of 10, it would be right. Category three is your heart and your soul and your intuition keep getting more tuned in. So let's be honest, this whole food and body and self-acceptance journey, it is not a rational one, right? It is very emotional. It tugs at your heartstrings. It nags at your spirit. And it's rare that I speak with a woman who doesn't know that her problem is not going to be solved with a diet. And you can't logic and reason your way through an emotional problem. Otherwise, you'll always be simply addressing the effects. And as we've talked about before, a lot of those ways of addressing the problem, you know, dieting, restriction, control, all the things, it actually makes it all worse. And if you're like me and most people that I know, when you get truly and painfully honest with yourself, your heart and soul and spirit knows that a diet won't cut it either and that you need to take a different approach and you need something more. And nine times out of 10, you would be right, okay? So 
how do you actually heal it? Well, let's actually let's talk about that. So the way I see it, there's a few layers to this. And keep in mind, this is not something that happens overnight. I actually, you know, walk my clients through an entire 16 week process to really help them establish a new relationship with themselves, a new relationship with food in their body. But if I were to bottom line it, I would say this. So yeah, first you need a better strategy like we talked about, right? A winning game plan rooted in the care mentality, not the repair mentality, because you're, remember, like your brain is failing, not because it's actually failing, but because it's playing a losing game that you'll never actually be able to win, okay? And so if you are using a strategy that is founded in restriction or deprivation or punishment or just persuading yourself to do or eat or move in a certain way that you don't enjoy or that you can't possibly sustain long term, or if you're using a strategy that causes you to spend an exorbitant amount of time and energy and heart and soul thinking about food and your body and your weight when all you really want to do is think about it last or stop thinking about it. Or if you're using a strategy that's getting harder the more you practice it and you're getting worse at it the more you practice it. And, and that's really what the diet mentality and the, and the repair mentality does and how it impacts you like you'll never get good at it then your strategy is a big part of the problem, okay? And this is where I have to remind you again, like you can't out diet a bad strategy and you can't out mindset a bad strategy. And if you have a tendency to start things and stop them, what if it's not because there's something wrong with you, right? What if it's because it's just a bad strategy for you? Or perhaps it's a broken model altogether, one that I guarantee even the most willpower driven woman couldn't sustain. So that's the first part of the answer. And, and it's simple, not easy, because the world is obviously throwing more you know, short-term Band-Aids at you. But the simple answer is you need a better strategy. But the other side of it is, is that you need new stories and beliefs. Because again, I could straight up give you the stressless eating strategy that I teach my clients. But if we don't go identify the weeds in the garden of your mind that are causing you to not finish what you start and feel like a failure and think you're a self-sabotager or just simply those thoughts that are causing you to think and feel and act and behave the way that you are, they don't just go away on their own. And you can't out diet and outsmart and outperform those beliefs either. And that's why it's got to be both. So when I say both, it's like you need a new strategy so that the food and body side of things is simple and stressless and sustainable. And the key word here is sustainable, where you learn a new language and a new paradigm one time, but it's something you practice for the rest of your life. And as you practice it more, you get better at it and it gets easier so that you don't have to practice it as much and it just becomes who you are. Versus, again, dieting just gets harder the more you practice it. And you never get good at it. You actually get worse at it the more you practice it. You just never get good at those things, right? But like we've also talked about a lot, and we went deep in part three of this series, you've got to step into the stories and the self-image and the identity to actually make that happen. Like, that's what I mean when I say it's got to be both. And I see women all the time, you know, just taking on a new tactic, but it's the same strategy, or it's a new diet and it's got a new face and a new name, but it's really just more of the same. Only this time, maybe it's focusing on calories and not carbs, or it's focusing on fat grams or times of the day or macros or whatever it is. And so again, using a new tactic, but the same strategy will create more of the same problem. And then the big one that women skip over is the self-image thing, because Again, it's I know it's not sexy, right? But also if you're constantly telling yourself that you're a self-sabotager or weak-willed or a failure, it's going to become a self-fulfilling prophecy if you don't address that. And that's what you'll step into, especially if you have that kind of self-talk kind of fired and wired into your relationship with food and your body. And please know, I'm not trying to sound all doom and gloom, but that's the recipe for disaster and a spiral that will keep repeating itself until you go heal it, Okay. But when you do the work and you actually earn back your own trust and you become reliable to yourself and your word is no longer this negotiable thing, it's crazy because now everything works and every plan of action becomes actionable and everything just begins to flow. And that's because you start working and because you become the cause of the action and because you begin to flow. 
And I promise you this, th- this kind of transformation cannot be found in another diet or plan or program because those things are not the problem. Like, I mean, this was so much love. You're the problem, right? But by golly, you are the beautiful solution. And wow, what an opportunity that is because God wants to meet you there. When you start saying, okay, God, I'm ta- I'm ready to take responsibility. I'm ready to use my free will. I'm telling you, God will show up for you because, again, I'll say this, you know, God did not design us to have such a toxic relationship with food and our bodies. But that's also why we have one more chain that we need to break and the last weight of the weight to ditch, which is the weight of feeling alone or trying to do it all alone or trying to save yourself. And that's where I'll invite you into this idea that you can't see what you can't see. So you might need to borrow someone else's brain. And that's literally what I do with my clients. I say, hey, borrow my brain, borrow my beliefs while we go build your own brain and beliefs. But what I really want to invite you into is this, like, what if this was the perfect place to invite God into this and borrow God's belief and God's view of you? I mean, like, what if you are broken like we all are and you need a savior? Like, This is honestly one of the hardest things for me to accept and grasp. But like once I did, oh, wow, like it it changed everything. In Romans 3.23, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all need help. Now, just hear me out for a minute on something else, too, because the number one thing I hear from the women that I talk to is, Leanne, I know what to do, but I just can't get myself to do it. And that's where that makes us think we don't need help. And that's where I want to invite you into another possibility, which is what if you actually don't know what to do? And what if you learned what I learned, which is that eat less, move more, avoid that, restrict that, control that kind of weight loss repair mentality that is not only no way to live and something the most willpower driven woman couldn't sustain, but as you're now learning, it doesn't even work. And the truth is, is that if you did know what to do, you would be doing that by now, right? And I mean this with so much love, but what if you actually don't know what to do? And what if you never actually learned a long-term sustainable way of thinking? And what if you never learned how to have a stressless relationship with food, one where you don't have to think about it all the time and food can just be food? And what if you never learned how to truly love yourself, like warts and all, as Jesus loves you and as God sees you. That's why I strongly urge you to not do this alone because the solution is in your blind spot and you're gonna need help seeing what you can't see. And look, you know, I've seen so many women try to heal this on their own or think that they're weak if they need help. And if you've spent years trying to do this on your own and it hasn't been working, this is why. Like, This is a big thing that you've got to get the support that you need. Like, it's not the kind of thing that you can just do on your own. And I mean this with so much love, but like, this is your health. This is your life. This is what's at stake. And if you've been struggling with this for years, which, you know, if you're listening to this, you probably have, it's not going to go away on its own. It actually does get worse if you don't address it because the solution is living inside of your blind spot. And so, yes, you need to retrain your brain. But what if you needed to also surrender this over to God? Like, what if you needed a savior? What what if you couldn't do this on your own? And honestly, do you even want to? And I hear women say all the time, but Leanne, I gave this over to God and I asked him to take away this burden from me. And again, it typically means they ask God to give them more willpower and discipline and self-control so they can keep dieting and keep restricting and keep obsessing and keep going down that repair mentality road. But that's the opposite of what I'm saying. Like what I'm saying is to invite God into the conversation of you actually healing your relationship with food and your body and healing your self-image and identity and becoming the version of yourself that no longer relies on her old coping mechanisms or feeling like she's addicted to food or sugar and become a new creation so that you can truly be healthy mind, body and soul. And so can you see how different that is than asking God to help you lose weight or have more willpower to diet so that you can go lose weight, right? And again, this idea of inviting God into the conversation and everything that we've talked about today and over the last few weeks, that is something that not only have most women never done in general, but they've never invited God to help them heal the true deeper problem. 
And there is nothing wrong with saying like, hey, I need help. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, God, I don't want to do this on my own anymore so that you can really address what's keeping you stuck and end the war and truly begin your journey of healing. And as always, everything I share is simply an invitation without expectation to just try on a new story and a new perspective and see what meets you where you are in your own journey. This is a massive conversation, and a lot of women have a really complicated relationship with food and their body, and that's why this entire series was really about inviting you into a conversation where you can explore these massive topics, but from a place of no fluff and truly addressing the problem from its roots, but also from a place of love and grace and compassion. And this is hopefully just the beginning of these powerful conversations that if you continue to explore, can and will transform your entire being. And I truly mean that from my own experiences and witnessing hundreds of other women and teens walk themselves through that themselves and with God and inviting God into the conversation. But before we wrap, I want to revisit some scripture that we looked at a few weeks ago that is such a beautiful, it's kind of like a beautiful bow to wrap around this entire series. And it's from Colossians 3, 8 through 10, where it says, you're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes that you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. And that sums up exactly what I mean by ditching the repair mentality and stepping into new definitions of health. And of course, recreating your self-image and identity and renewing your mind by rewriting and rewiring your brain. But this time, just like the scripture says, custom made by the creator with his label on it. Because there is so much more available to you than living in a food and a body and a shame prison. And that is all I want for you. I just want you to be free. And so now you understand why it is so incredibly powerful and relevant to invite God into this conversation from day one. Because if you're wondering what's God got to do with your relationship with food and your body, I am here to tell you everything. Everything you know and everything you didn't know, you didn't know. That's it for today's episode of the What's God Got to Do With It and the Outway Podcast Crossover. Thanks for tuning in. And if you want to learn more about the work that I do or catch either of the podcasts on a regular basis, there's a couple of ways you can do that. First off, if you want to learn how to turn off the part of your brain that's obsessed with food or obsessed with your weight and rewire your own brain for peace and freedom, then head on over to StresslessEating.com and sign up to watch the Stressless Eating Sneak Preview where I've literally peeled the curtain and walked you through the exact strategy I teach my clients to heal themselves from the all or nothing diet mentality for good but without restricting themselves, punishing their bodies, and definitely without ever having to use words like macros, low carb, or calorie burn. It's there for you to access over at stresslesseating.com. And if you're listening to this series over on What's God Got to Do With It, I also co-host the Outweigh podcast with radio personality Amy Brown, where we help women break themselves out of the food and body prison, end the dieting madness, and take control of their health for good, but without all that restriction, obsession, and shame, and without dragging it out for years to address it. It's called Outweigh, and you can find it wherever podcasts are streamed. And if you're listening to this crossover series on Outweigh, check out my other podcast called What's God Got to Do With It, where I talk about all this self-image and body image stuff, but from the perspective of where brain science intersects faith. It's called What's God Got to Do With It, and you can access it on iHeart or wherever you get your podcasts. So that's it for this episode of the What's God Got to Do With It and the Outweigh podcast crossover series. I'm your host, Leanne Ellington, and I'm so grateful to walk alongside you on this beautiful journey. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you got whatever you needed to get from it. Bye for now. For decades, the mafia had New York City in a stranglehold, with law enforcement seemingly powerless to intervene. 
It uses terror to extort people. But the murder of Carmichael Galanti marked the beginning of the end. It sent the message that we can prosecute these people. Listen to Law & Order Criminal Justice System on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Meet the real woman behind the tabloid headlines in a personal podcast that delves into the life of the notorious Tori Spelling as she takes us through the ups and downs of her sometimes glamorous, sometimes chaotic life and marriage. I just filed for divorce. Whoa. I said the words <laughs> that I've said like in my head for like 16 years. Wild. Listen to Miss Spelling on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Michael Rappaport, and I have been professionally podcasting for 10 years. The podcast game has changed so much, and if you're looking for the most disruptive podcast in the world, then subscribe to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast today. We're talking sports, politics, pop culture, entertainment, and anything that catches my attention. Listen to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Sino Show. I'm your host, Sino McFarlane. I'm an addiction specialist. I'm a coach, I'm a translator, and I'm God's middleman. My job is to crack hearts and let the light in and help everyone shift the narrative. I want to help you wake up and I want to help you get free. Most importantly, I don't want you to feel alone. Listen to the Sino Show every Wednesday on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Senora Sex Ed is not your mommy's sex talk. This show is La Platica like you've never heard it before. We're breaking the stigma and silence around sex and sexuality in Latinx communities. This podcast is an intergenerational conversation between Latinas from Gen X to Gen Z. We're your hosts, Diosa and Mala. You might recognize us from our first show, Locatora Radio. Listen to Senora Sex Ed on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 